Hey there, welcome back, Maris here, and today we have Everspace 2 and my 20 tips and tricks about the game so you can enjoy it a little bit more. A little spoiler alert warning, uh, I have to show you things that are later in the game. There will be zero storyline spoilers, but you will see some things that at the first are not there, well, and, and some other things, but I will try to avoid as much as I can, but some of the tips, of course, include them. So. Let's jump right in the game and I will start with tip number one is do the explorer challenges. I'd say all challenges with explorer important. I will rush through if you have questions for any of those points or any additional. There's a way more to talk about this game, but I will just run through all of them. Challenges can be found under data challenges. I really put a huge emphasizes on particular explorer as you can see every system you arrive will have these basic things whenever you do it last one is get close to the sun you basically need to uh when when it's unlocked you need to fly into the sun until it's basically checked then you can turn around so uh what it does this this is the what you are after in every single system when you master it you can fly from point to point that you will be doing a lot but with huge extra speed which basically makes all the game way faster you because the things happen at the points to points in the in between there's nothing particular to do so in every single system you need to do them and i say do it as fast as you can because that because that speeds up all the other things you do in the game right uh as clear as it as it is next point is do the signal decoders asap let me show you what these are time after time some enemies or somewhere you will pick up these things this one is particular superior quality doesn't matter the thing is they have a level and you have a level currently i'm 30 this is 30 it's fine but if they fall below three levels i think for example you are 10 and that one is seven you are not even able to engage with them if you try to activate it as you can see there's at the bottom there's activate it says no it's too low level you cannot activate them and the thing is whenever you activate it uh what it happens on a map appears high risk area you will need them also to do those challenges i just showed you but the most important part is uh, sorry a little bit in front of screen as you can see there are extra criteria happening for example enemies are resistant to mb but look at this load quality lower tier of course will be lower but the thing is they drop so many amazing little things you will use and you will need a lot of them right whenever you find it do it asap because whenever even if it's one or two levels below your level, it means they will drop only low level items. You don't need them. You need higher and your tier, right? So next up is whenever you get all of those things, what to do with them? Because you have an option for all every item you see at the bottom, there's item change. Well, you can sell, dismantle or equip. If you find shiny things and the currently equipped is better then obviously there's two choices and dismantling i'd say happens way less well when you dismantle you have the uh, components that you can use to produce them produced items in this game has downsides you can't um, change their um, rarity you can't change their level so basically they're downside even I will get there in the details, but it's basically you can craft only crappy items. My advice, don't don't craft them. Uh, so it means you don't need those components. That means you don't need to dismantle, but you can sell them. And yes, that's what you are going to do. If they are not useful for you, sell them. Why you ask? Point number four, upgrade your ship. Whenever you start the game, you will have a sentinel ship not like not this cool looking you will have sentinel ship first level 
every ship, every kind of ships, there are nine in light, medium, and heavy categories, each of and every one of them, there will there are three different types of ships. And all of those ships come in four different tiers. Normally you are able to get three tiers in the game. The fourth tier you need to unlock. But anyways, even if you use you want to you play all the time with Sentinel, for example, uh, first tier, second or third, they different uh, differentiate quite a bit. The small increase of hull damage and speed and all those, and not damage, but hull amount and, and all that seems small, but there are way more things. I will get into details, but the thing is, whenever you buy a new ship, you sell the previous one. And my approximate calculations say you lose a little money, a little money by selling and basically repurchasing. If you have same ship and you purchase the same ship, I think it was less than 10% or 10%, something like that. It is absolutely nothing comparison to what you get when you upgrade and get higher tier ships. And yes, if you're wondering, these ships unlock uh, are unlocked by level. The, when you hit a, a certain level, then ship dealers will provide next tier, up to tier 3, as I said. We'll get to the point where you will unlock the fourth four. Uh, then the only thing, again, exception to my point, is dismantle superior. And the reason is simple. Superior is the only uh, achievable, uh, let's say, option for you. Uh, let me explain. You see, if you, if I, in, in case, in case I find this energy core and I see everything is great about it, but it's red, it's not superior. What I can do, I can increase its rarity if I haven't built it. So by increasing rarity, I need this uh, star charge conduct. And these come only when you dismantle superior. So the only of all the parts, you will get other parts as well, but the only use of all the components you can get for it by dismantling is when you get to the point of star charge conduct. The previous ones, you only can upgrade the rare or, or, or what is, I don't know, this power coupling level, uh, then come on. You know, there's beyond that. There's always better fish and, and, and upgrading to the, a little bit more and upgrading. A, <laughs> and you can upgrade, increase level by one only once. That's another point. So trust me when I say dismantling all other um, weapon priorities are not useful. The only thing is when it comes around level 20, 18, 19, 20, that's where the first time in the game you will start perceiving these superior levels. Then, of course, when you outlive their life, dismantling them will give you these rare uh, crafting items that you will afterwards use. And anyways, anyways, that's that's enough of that. Uh, next is my advice is test different perks and by test I mean just just showing it's free whenever you go in the perks screen and you select yourself you have three choices every five levels you see this how you unlock them different playstyles different ships require different things in my opinion playing with Sentinel this is this is basically and actually the same goes for Vindicator those two ships I highly recommend not a single thing changes with one playstyle another playstyle it is my favorite I will leave the screen you can see you will find yourself not going through all of them but I'm saying if that not doesn't work for you you can freely change at any given point on time in when you are landed not when you're flying around, then it's restricted, but uh, whenever you are landed in any starport, you can come and find and check and test for yourself. Do that, do that. One number seven is get beams dispatcher and dealer. What it means, uh, these fellows will join you through the story. Don't think about them, don't rush them. They will come one at a time and what I'd say to pay attention. They play a role because under perks, they, they, they work like bent joints and then 
you can have three different types and three different stages of unlockables. I'd say three of them are really the things that change how you how you enjoy the game. One of them is right here. This is the beam. Uh, tractor beam is how you receive items. You can read how you, what it does. Increasing and improving it right away or as soon as you can makes huge difference because you will use this beam from the beginning of the game until the end of the game and beyond. Trust me on this. So uh, this upgrade is really crucial. The second what sh which made a huge impact on the game was this dispatcher. It allows you to instantly teleport items from your ship to the base, to this storage, the same storage. And especially when you don't have high tier um, ship, you will have cargo space it's really limited. So basically you shoot down a few enemies and you are fully packed. You want to sell them, but that means you need to drive. It's, it's problematic. So this perk uh, allows you to teleport back to storage and then here in the storage you come back home in your base and basically sort out things you want you need you dismantle you sell and basically really eases up the traveling back and forth time and the last one is i already touched a little bit whenever you almost at the end of the game close to the end you will get terrain on your side and here you see he has this ship dealers and the problem is it has six upgrade levels and the last one, only the last one, when you have six out of six, uh, gives the option that in Kato, they will offer uh, top tier ships. This is the only place, the only way how you can get level four. So don't rush too much. They are quite costly. It just unlocks them to be purchasable. So upgrade. Don't sit on your first level uh, ship and thinking, okay, I will get my fourth right away you will struggle because there will be a huge gap between enemies and your first tier weapon get to the point of having level three and then easily yeah enemies it's just out there so this is where you need to pay attention whenever you get terrain and you dream about the fourth tier ship this is how to get it now the question okay i will a little bit explain I currently have all of them upgraded so I can show, but can't show you. But what the problem is, to unlock these things, Tarin says, hmm, bring me a lot of things from everything. This is where the point eight kicks in. How to, I will teach you how to get things, for example, for Tarin. Quite specifically, Tarin, it one of the points says things like, okay, bring me, emitters these ta 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 emitters let's make it 10 so now you need 10 of these emitters that you can craft no problem whatsoever look at the resources you need and then you're like okay you need 10 of them it means i need 50 pure burmite i have only five so you can imagine it really frustrates to to gather all the resources in every step so this is where really this proper learning how to mine kicks in because even if it requires some emitters or some other of these components or, or any other you will get, you will need them uh, it comes down if you have not the casual resource but the upgraded this rare version pure dark energy this this extra pure Klygon this is the rare things you can get them by mining not by simple mining Pay attention, really pay attention because I was so dumb. You can shoot with any weapon you want on a mining node when it explodes or something, something that resources picked up. Awesome. What game does not tell you, at least not right at the start, is there is just one weapon that is meant for mining. If you play, pay close attention to beam laser, only these weapons I have found in a game have these read down I, I can't move mo, mo, mouse over but check what are the abilities for the weapon 25% all mining modifiers is one but the read the rest one 184 increased chance to extra higher rarity resource for mining 
it's on almost double, extra double chance to get the, those rare items. And even further, chance to mine an additional resource 50% with every resource mined. This one particular weapon, I was such a lucky guy to get all of these combined in this one thing. They, but only for beam lasers, sometimes one of these extra things come uh, randomly just pop up. Keep that one beam, keep that one beam. Trust me, you will want that. Because when it comes to particular one resource missing, you want to mine it. And now I'm going to show you how to mine it. Not how, but where. This also uh, requires a little bit of explanation, but at least we know how to use proper beam laser, right? And now the question is where? When you go on a map, this is how it how, how basically your map looks like. I'm just zooming out so it's not too cluttered. And where? Where I can find this boromite? Pay attention. At this side is some random icons. If you check them, there's some useful information. And then there's the one, oh, resources. Oh, I, I'm, I already have marked it, so I have selected pure baromite. What happens now, don't pay attention where, but it shows directly where to go to find my boromite. I can come here and if I mouse over, look at this. It's, it's even high. There will be other resources as well, but high chance. And with my beam laser, I can easily get them all. But there's a little catch. Let me show an example of, yeah, this is a, this is a, one of the examples. Look here. The thing is, whenever you go in a such system, uh, on, on, on a planet around whatever it is, you need to, when you find the mine, uh, the, the node, you need to hit it. You need to collect that item and only then it will register. Okay, there's a copper on this. Okay, there's a Clygon on it. Okay, there's a Bromite on it. The last one, sorry, my screen is a little bit over. It says unknown crystal. For example, here is one more crystal. I have no knowledge. And by this fil that filter I showed you, uh, currently also on the screen, I don't know, maybe on this planet, there's also pure uh, the baromite. Maybe it's not. I don't know because I haven't collected all four types. So that you need to do yourself. And only when you go through the systems and, and the planets and collect the resources, you will have registered the resource map. And then you can use this filter usefully. This is how it works. There is a big catch, but this particular resource collecting comes later in the game, let's say. So until then, you will be already scouted through and then, uh, you know, anyways, you get the point. Now let's move up. We have, we are switching back gears to items. Items are in three types. Different rarities, don't pay attention to that. Don't look at my legendaries, nothing to see here, but pay attention to all the items. They are the ones now let's pick some other, for example, this row. There is not a single particular thing in this icon, just a weapon. Then, for example, this, you see there's a circle around it. And if you mouse over it, you see it's a prototype. Right beneath the rare and, and where the 30 uh, level is, it's a prototype. It is higher potential. Not even potential, it's even higher just by default. And if you look at my, for example, this sensor, it says Starforge. Don't mind the rarity, the color of it, but the circle around is really bright. And I can give you the, the, the numbers if you want to. For example, this is the this is the optimized item. As you can see, doesn't matter what type of uh, um, attributes it gives, it gives up to fully maxed everything, everything. 470 and it will never go beyond if the item is casual the same or whatever item if it has prototype it can go beyond and it can give you 498 uh, attribute points for whatever attributes it provides and if you go even beyond and have starforge it has 527 so you see the difference 527 
attributes or 470 57 57 attribute points that's quite a big and imagine if you can gather all the starforged items all the starforged weapons of course weapons will have higher dps as well with the exact same weapon so anyways these circles pay attention to them if you find a weapon or something that is uh wow it all it looks all good and everything and everything if it doesn't have the circle around it, it's not the best option and you can change it it is there or it's not it's simple as that and of course you cannot craft one with the circle so that's where the crafting items are not usable anyways i'm moving on i'm moving on uh spread the attributes this is something controversial because i'm not doing that myself but i will give you just an information so you know more uh, when it comes to the ships you have attributes you put the points two things to remember uh, to remember here first one is to put the game explains it when when you increase it by one point it requires one mainframe uh, this expansion second one already requires two then three so basically the every extra requires way more mainframe expansion this is the first thing how putting everything in one attribute is quite expensive than just distributing all over the spreading all over the place but second thing is what game does not give you any information and read through the internet the more attribute point you have for for example for firepower the less this bonus is given and it soft locks around 400 uh, 4, for example when you, i have if i have 400 firepower i need to add extra way more to have any significant difference in this kinetic damage this this one and 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 uh energy damage so basically the more you attributes have the less it gives out and the more expensive it is so it kind of game pushes you to not put all the eggs in one basket which i did absolutely so <laughs> just just you need to be aware of these things and i'm giving the information next is learn your ship this is absolutely crucial there are four things generally how and what changes with your ship uh, what doesn't change the weapons you can equip any weapon any things the amount of the slots changes and such but the decors and, and and these cargo units all the same uh what items you can use the same it's all the same attributes um firepower precision structure utility all the same as well so what changes first of all there's one special passive kind of thing you can read when whenever here and you see it, that's first change second every single ship has ultimate ultimatum this is an active ability uh, for example this one i hate i don't use bleh, don't like it but all other things are amazing uh, with sentinel the third thing this is the kicker remember i mentioned you to upgrade the ship when you have the first level ship you will not have these four passives i'm just moving around my head so you can read it you will not have four of them only my fourth level tier have these extra points so not only your next tier ship is faster stronger and whatnot it will have extra passive for example you see 50 percent increased shield hit points that's quite huge so these are the three things obvious the third thing which is yeah this game is a little bit different is this expertise differentiates for each ship for example this particular sentinel why it's so amazing shield damage reduction so my shield is way stronger than any other ships shields why because when they i, I can show you for example vindicator when you uh, mouse over and, and check the vindicator they don't have shield damage reduction you have just you see just drone hit points drone damage and break interaction range absolutely something unique for uh that particular ship class which brings back to the thing if you take a look and and scroll through there is not a single attribute that gives and provides anything to the shield so basically shield is static as fuck, not for sentinel 
Sentinel has this expertise, which boosts everything you need, and Shield, which is... This is how combining all the things you see here, all the four items, read through, see how it works together. For example, here, primary weapons have increased rate when I have more, basically, shield charge, which works together awesomely with my expertise because my shield is way stronger. So it means I have more shield whenever I receive damage, which actually boosts this one. So that's how you check and see every single ship has absolutely different things, right? I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, let me just move forward. Uh, my favorite three attributes is firepower, utility, and expertise. Not particular in that order because I, mean, I will just show you one thing uh, quickly. Bomber. Ah, sorry, it's a little bit lagging. Bomber has this hull repair per hull damage dealt. This expertise, in my opinion, absolute shit. I will not leave points, not a single one of them there. I will change all the layout, all the attributes there. That's why expertise I put in the third point. But um, let's switch back. Why still these three to pay attention? Firepower basically increases your output. Windicator is the only ship which uses drones around that's damage. Uh, it's all, all the damage for all the other ships you will do. So basically, this is your main thing. Pay attention whenever you pick up any item. Most of my items have firepower and maximum firepower as I can get. And the next one is utility. Utility, as you can see, is this particular not so much because, as I said, I'm not using, for example, ultimatum and all those. It's actually not, yeah, it doesn't work together. It works more with devices. For devices, I don't need it's the cooldowns and everything. I'm just a flying bomber killer so this this i'm not uh relying on utility for example when we are talking about vindicator quite different story i quite a lot heavily used uh, devices so their damage their cooldown is absolutely essential and expertise is already explained for example in Sen for sentinel it's essential i actually would love higher I know why it's actually so low, because I switched, this is not my primary ship at the end game, so I just packed with the items that uh, I had spare in my uh, storage. This is not the best equipped. Best equipped ship currently is this one, Vindicator. Uh, but yeah, no, let's not get there. Then, if there are good attributes, there are bad attributes. In my opinion, resistance and structure, both of them are quite shit. Why? Because you have shield, you have armor, and then you have hull. If shield is damaged to the point of no repair, it doesn't come back. You basically are in really hailstorm, and your armor is even down. Then one little bar hull, hull health will not keep you alive. You will die. So if you are at the point where you, your hull is being destroyed, you did something absolutely wrong way before. So these resistance and structure, if you pay attention, it provides additional bonus, uh, mostly and module resistance as well. And here, hull damage reduction. No, no, it's it's normally when you play normally and uh, through the whole main game, most of the time you need to be aware. So your shield, you work with your shield. If your shield is down, basically, you get out of there. You get back your shield full full on, and then you start killing it's simple as that you you are not sitting stationary you will be just killed in that sense structure and resistance is absolutely pointless you will never use them because your hull will never get damaged simple as that i will move more forward than I, I this one i need to show you hook it up means simple uh, you have a device at the start which is a booster and you think it's great no it's not when you have it fully upgraded this is absolutely the best. And the main reason is, first, you have huge, huge distance. You don't need to worry about it as much as you can see. See how far I can get? And you have this boost around the corners. You basically catapult yourself through the space. And yes, if you're wondering, yes, it has so little cooldown, way smaller than the booster. And it has four charges. So basically, whenever there is something around, yes, I use it also in a combat. 
uh, when I'm shooting, shooting, boom, 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 everything is cool. And then suddenly I see my shield is down. I start receiving armor damage. You just, with this little interaction, I'm out of there. Even if you're grabbed and everything and slowed and whatnot, it is just amazing. It's, it's absolutely best. And through the whole game, most of the game, not about talking about combat, you will have to explore, to find, to go through s uh, small tight places, distances, everything. Almost 95% of time you can grab somewhere and just catapult yourself to a direction. It is way more versatile than this. I will show you, I will show you, I will show you. Done. I need to remind myself what was the name of this. Um, Disenergize boost? Yes. Instantly catapult shift forward for two seconds. Of course, fully upgraded is better, but no, 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 no. I'm not going to change my hook. It's absolutely amazing. So next up we have, I need to touch a little bit about favorite weapons. Favorite weapons are simple as that, is flak. Every single one of my ships, as you can see, the indicator, bomber, and even gunship. Oh, gunship has, uh, sorry, just legendary flak. It doesn't matter. Flak is amazing weapon for one particular reason. It has 100 meters, area of damage which means missiles easy to shoot down m mines easy to shoot down those little pesky drones that fly with big ships and repair them and camouflage and all that they just die without even asking it's in insane how good this weapon is because of this range is quite high damage is quite good blast damage is just amazing Yes, just go with that. And one of the things I need to mention, if you are closer than 100 meters, for example, there are some enemies right in front of you. If you shoot them, the same blast radius will damage your shield. This is the thing when you switch to coil gun. Uh, I brought down laser. Any laser, because I'd say avoid such things as auto cannon and anything where projectile flies I'm talking about the first, uh, this, this primary weapons. Um, I will fly out just to demonstrate once again. Um, not the bad weapons, but the good ones. So this is already there. These flak projectiles fly a distance and they can be destroyed. But when some enemy is close to you, you just switch over to laser. And why laser? Because it shoots exactly where you aim at it. So you do, don't need to maneuver through and, and, and think ahead and shoot in front of the enemy. So it, it's, it's simpler life. It's just having flak and having second as a laser for close combat and, and for, for um, just, just for cooldown basically to switch over uh, for a while, so you have a cooldown reset. Okay, that's that's that. And last but not least, there is, as you can know, as you know, there is secondary weapon that you need to shoot. When you shoot it, it basically eats your rockets or mines or whatever you pick. They have a particular amount. For example, here only five rounds of this absolute just killer marksman cruise missile i know i know it's just overkill but nevertheless my advice pick something that shoots free missiles if you read uh, this this weapon there are also the blue ones the green uh, it's a random chance to have this ability where on primary weapon critical hit there is 20 percent chance you will fire a free missile which means you just switch between first and second weapon Pew, 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 all the time, they, they are free of charge, there is no ammunition whatsoever. And time after time, this beauty will just randomly pew, go out. And this is amazing, especially if you pay attention above the line. This is not from uh, those three um, char characteristics of this missile launcher. Above, there's even one more. Upon firing, missile instantly hits the target which means there is no flying distance. It's, this is, and sometimes some of the, uh, these, these missiles have that. 
I love it. And yes, of course, there's one more essential, cannot be damaged. Otherwise, if you shoot out this random missile and it gets damaged, eh, yeah, it's pointless. This one instantly hits and, and it's a green missile at me. Uh, it eats through as a corrosion. So there is no uh, damage to shields. It eats right to the hull, to the armor, which uh, helps extra, just saying. Anyways, pay attention. This is my favorite setup. Uh, flak, something that shoots laser. In this case, I have Gauss cannon, uh, but yeah. And then, yeah, here I ha don't have missile. This, this ship was literally naked before I decided to make this video. Point number 17 is do not restock and repair. Ever, never, ever, never. Simple as that. Uh, one of the things is even if you have the perks and everything in Angar, you have a restock. Restock basically all shoot out missiles are basically replaced, which at the end game is really costly. Remember those five big boys that you I can shoot out? They cost in thousands. It's really eating up if you ever restock here. And the second one is repair. Repair is for armor and for hull. The thing is, the only thing you need to do, for example, to repair your... Uh, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. You need to go... Basically, I have this in my default uh, setup. One is the missile defense system that if you read through when it's fully upgraded, 40% chance that the missile that is shoot at me is captured and put in my... Basically, this is how you restock. If you shoot out in previous uh, ba uh, bas boss combat and you are out of missiles, enter any, any, any area, anything where there's anyone that shoots at you missiles, you just fly around enabling this missile de defense system and gather them back it's really cheap it basically you do it you don't need to specifically do it you just you know you're out of missiles and in your know, next encounters just shoot this few times and you will get all of them back free of charge and this is the repair repair sorry i'm pronouncing like a moron repairs the hu ship's hull for 40 percent of damage dealt fully upgraded of course and yeah, I have also, uh, but I can sh ignore kinetic energy, also repairs armor and shield, half of them. Yes, I d this is the best one. You, whenever you enable it, you just shoot at something. You don't need to kill it, but it just repairs you. Simple as that. Those two options basically remove your restock and repair option whatsoever for all the ships. And I think, yeah, for this one as well, this is basically oh shit button. Uh, the repair for every single sh uh, ship i have i have different other options but this is the basic setup for devices anyways moving on point number 17 track missing components this is actually i needed to show you earlier but remember when i showed you these components when, when these at some point were required if you miss just craft them use all the resources because as soon as you have below needed amount this button uh, comes available i hate when the games does not allow you to track when you have five would love to track it anyways but when you use them up track them and that's way easier it's easier when you approach a seller a merchant from all the list it will immediately pop out and say well this is the catalyst you needed somewhere absolutely amazing that game provides such tracking other games does not great and install the catalyst if it's worth it now i need to touch a little bit catalysts uh catalysts you can read all the what they do and all that that basically on top of your weapon or device rarity level is it star forged or or what was the prototype what else what else if it's optimized the maximum points given there's additional point, well, no, this is the same. One of the, these catalysts is optimized. Yeah, this one, This that's why I have it marked. This basically, if you add this catalyst on the item, remember I showed you how much maximum potential points my particular item can have. Let me demonstrate it. 
I will show you where the catalyst makes sense. You see, for example, this one. I decide this booster is absolutely what I need, but I see, you see the firepower is some weird number, even if it's fourth level. When I press modify, I can install catalyst. And you see, when I install catalyst, it maximizes the full potential of this particular. It is not prototype, this is not Starforge, so basically this would be eh, pointlessly used catalyst, but you need to be aware of this. How catalyst, when you find the item, the weapon, the something is absolutely the best. For weapons, it, you don't have this optimized, but for weapons, for example, let's see this one, you have other catalysts, rapid. You see how quite drastically improve, not dra yeah, quite a lot improves this kinetic DPS and, and energy DPS. So it changes things, you know, small things, but they add up. So yeah, where it's worth it for blue and green weapons, catalysts would be, check how, how easy it is to make them. Maybe it's, you have a lot of these resources, you can make it, but otherwise I used it only on the end game. Last but not least, yes. Uh, my advice is still to have Sentinel. Why? Because it's way faster. When you th fly through uh, all the all the mm, ruins and the planets and find little tiny things and, and do them little uh, puzzle things and all that, it's way easier to do it with fast, fast, easy to handle, super strong shield, absolute killer, firepower. It's, it's amazing shit. Only when it comes to the end game, when it's get things get crazy, and they, they will get crazy. I'm not going to spoil anything, but this is absolute beast. Mostly, mostly not because it has drones that shoot. They are not that powerful. Most important thing is you can have up to six drones. They draw attention. So basically, whenever you drive any other ship, you are the only target on the system. Everyone basically shoots you maybe there are some allies or something they die fast then you are the only target when you're talking about vindicator they ha it has six drones around you and they all draw attention so basically all the enemy firepower is scattered to seven targets six drones and you sometimes nobody even shoots at you because the drones draw all attention you just sit in the middle and look how they fight of course you join in with still with three three weapons you have full potential you have everything you have the ship especially has 3500 3600 expertise almost at the soft cap it's insane firepower and little to no damage received absolutely have to have rest of the ships just just try them out but honestly not a single one of the small ones I totally not recommend. Uh, they are a little bit faster, but they just fly with single shot, absolute garbage. Not didn't like any single one of them. Uh, and from heavy ships, Vindicator is the king. Bomber and gunship, tough to handle, but they can do some heavy hitting as well. Last but not least, I will throw one additional bonus. Do not, don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Yes, I'm referring to you, my dear brother. I, I watched my dear brother, sorry, yeah, behind my back there's difficulty setting. You can change it at any time. Just go in game, uh, difficulty. And I believe my brother played on very hard. This, yeah, this actually opens when you finish the game only, then you can go nuts. But my brother played, I think, on very hard. I watched him, he streamed for me, and I watched him die and die and die and die. And afterwards he died even a little bit more. And I was like, gaming should be fun. And honestly, I started the game hard. At the start, it was so steep curve. I changed it to normal. And then it was a little bit challenging. In the middle of the game, actually, when I realized all those points I just gave you, uh, switching to hard would make sense later at the game, it was a little bit too easy for me, but at absolute end, I switched to Nightmare and jumped in all the things the game will throw at you, and that's, that's, there will be things, a lot of things, and uh, yeah, if you didn't realize, I don't make videos about the games I don't like, I absolutely recommend this one, it's great, 
especially when you fly through all the gameplay with the Sentinel, then you get your hands on fourth level Vindicator and you put all the best items and two legendaries. Oh boy, oh boy, oh sweet Jesus, this is a killer. So, this is my 20 tips and bonus added. Um, let me know, uh, let me switch. I like this, this is an amazing wallpaper uh, from, from the game. Uh, if you have any questions, there's so much I want to talk about this game. I can show you some cool combat tips if you are interested or some end game things to expect and how and what to absolutely farm legendaries. Yes, these are not randomly. I just farm them because I'm psycho and you know, and if you didn't realize this 100% uh, completion is not by accident. This game is really enjoyable after when it's done. So yes, 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 I can talk hours and hours about it and explain and give you more tips and tricks. And uh, yeah, these are the most important ones. We'll meet in other videos. I'm back in the game and see you soon. Cheers.